people have a special role in society and the world? They've shown the world the way many times over the last 2,500 years. We're supposedly trying to be a standard of morals for the nations. We pray for us and for the whole rest of the world. Isaiah the prophet speaks of a time when the whole world will be filled with the knowledge of God, like water covers the sea. Before that time, the nations of the world will turn to the Jewish people, saying, lead us, for we know that God is with you. My original interest in the Noahide laws and in Noahidism in general, I guess could be traced back to when I was around 15 years old, when I was first becoming observant myself and getting interested in Torah. The one nagging question that I kept having is what's the difference between Jews and non-Jews? I knew a lot of non-Jewish people who were incredibly spiritual and incredibly nice, and it just didn't make sense to me that the Jewish people were like the only ones that could have a unique connection with God, and everybody else was left to just like worship the trees or something like that. It just didn't make sense. This summer, I traveled to Texas, where many of my questions got answered by a group of non-Jews who live their lives in accordance with the Torah's guidelines for them. They call themselves Noahides. When I began to learn the history of Judaism and the history of the B'nai Noah, it affected my life tremendously. Jim is an ex-Southern Baptist whose spiritual journey eventually led him to investigate the study of scripture and how it applies to him from a Torah perspective. Every Sunday, Jim studies with others who believe as he does. None of these people are Jewish and they have no intention of converting. This tradition traces its roots back to the biblical Noah who established a covenant with God on behalf of all mankind. Recently, within the last few decades, there has been a renewed awareness and observance of this covenant around the world under the name Noahidism, or B'nai Noah. Only the last 20 years is when this has really been being brought back, this ancient Noahide creed for the, the Gentile world. It, it, it's, oh, it's never died. We have uh, an American Indian that studied here for almost a year. Here's a B'nai Noah group sprung up in Nigeria, another group in Australia, another group in uh, South Africa. I mean, this I'm talking about in, in a matter of a few weeks, here's all these B'nai Noah groups happening, you know, had nothing to do with it. But it was like Hashem was raising these groups up. Ultimately, Noahidism is not meant to be a religion the way Judaism is meant to be a religion where everybody's kind of doing the exact same thing, rituals, whatever. There is a lot more leeway and room for cultural um, integration within the, under the Noahide laws. Like with Christianity, if you want to become Christian, you have to become westernized. You, know, you have to throw away your old culture and take on this new western culture. If you want to become like Muslim, you have to become Middle Eastern. If you want to adopt the Torah, you can keep your complete ethnic and cultural identity. I think one of the reasons why um, the Baptists are getting into this, you know, like, uh, and a lot of these, like, Christian, partic particularly Protestant groups, is because there's so much emphasis on Bible study. And so these people are meeting on a weekly basis, and they're very, very sincere, and they want to serve God, and they want to worship God, and they want to understand the Bible, so they start questioning things that, like, you know, don't seem to make sense that they're learning about in their churches, and eventually the only answers that they can really find are in Judaism. Eventually, we just we just suddenly came to the realization that um, the New Testament no longer holds any meaning to us, and everything that we are now saying that the Bible teaches is what Orthodox Judaism teaches. And we were like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> so we then went to go learn with rabbis. We began to study Hebrew. I was absolutely in awe. One of the first books that we studied was Wisdom of the Hebrew Alphabet, and. I always knew that God was awesome, but I really had no idea. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine how you'd feel if you if you were half a century old and you realized that, that your whole focus had been wrong? That it's, it's a very shocking thing to go through. Um, a very humbling thing. <laughs> 
I started to find out things like, for instance, that uh, the Torah was still in effect. But what I didn't know is that there was uh, one set of rules for Jews and another set for Gentiles. The Noahide laws cover all aspects of life. For example, our relationship with God, issues of morality, how we relate to the environment, and even the establishment of courts of justice. Now, how would you define the role of the Jews in the whole thing? The role of the Jews, they are to be the light to the nations. God took the nation of Israel to be a light to them so that they will have a beacon to go to to see the one God that created the heavens and the earth. So everybody, including the Jewish people, are Noahides, technically speaking. We're all descendants of Noah. The only thing that's specific about the Jewish people is that we have additional things that we must do in addition to this in order for us to sort of like have the special status of being teachers of the world in order to make sure that everybody else is doing what they need to do. Throughout much of history, um, the Gentiles of the world have uh, been persecuting the Jewish people. So it, it was kind of impossible for the Jewish people to really share with them very much, or else they killed and then couldn't share any Torah with anyone. So, um, but a lot of that, in a lot of places on earth today, that seems to have changed. Perhaps this is what the prophet Zechariah meant when he said that there will come a time when ten men of all languages of the nations will take hold of the shirt of the Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Are we in the times of Mashiach? I think so, but... I'm not wise enough to say that, but I really believe that. Hashem is the one that, that's bringing the hunger, bringing the Gentiles to the Torah. Many people think that the Messianic age is one that involves a very spiritual state where everybody's going to just like fly and become like angels or whatever, you know. When the Jewish view is kind of the opposite, where we say that no, the actual purpose is down here in this physical world, to make this physical world into a dwelling place for God, and to reveal God's essence down here. Mashiach is the world functioning in a way that it's supposed to function, and it was meant to function all along. They're going to come running, first, just like I did, they're going to run to the rabbi, grab him by the shirt, grab him by his talus, yeah. <laughs> grab him by his head or his beard, yeah. and say, hey, <laughs> teach me the ways of the Almighty, Hashem, you know, Yod Ke Vav Ke. I, that's what's going to happen. That bus leads towards Birmingham at 8. 30. So what I learned in Texas was that non-Jews do have a place in God's plan. And I also learned that as a Jew, I have the unique responsibility to teach the world about God and what God wants. The Baal Shem Tov taught that everything that happens here has a purpose to it, down to a small leaf falling from a tree. Each one of us has a unique purpose, a unique job. It seems like never before has the world been so ready it seems like the only question that remains is am I ready to assume my responsibility in the universal purpose of creation?